everybody, it's Mrs. Burke. This is video number 47, and I'm in Mrs. Rickenback's room, and she's letting me use it so I can film some videos for you. So, summary at the beginning, why must chemical equations be balanced? I want you to be able to list the steps that you need to balance the reaction, and then I've actually got an equation I'd like you to try to do for me. So I'm just doing a quick review from the last one. So number one, like my buddy the count here, you need to count the atoms on both sides of the equation. Then you have to determine if they are equal. If they are equal, you get to stop. Then you're good to go. You don't have to go forward. If they're not, then we've got to do something about it because we know that doesn't happen in nature. So what if it's not balanced? So this is where we're picking up from before, just like my elephant and my mouse here. So if you look at this equation, we have got two chlorine as reactants and we only have one as a product. Well, we know that can't happen in nature. Nature. So what is it that we can do? We said they have to be equal, but how is what I'd like you to star here and look at. You are going to discover the coefficients that you can put in front of the compounds. That is the only thing that you are allowed to do to balance a reaction. So discovering the coefficients is step three. Remember, you cannot change the subscript, right? Remember, if you go from H2O, water, tasty, right, to hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, very different. But what you are allowed to do is you may place any coefficient you wish in front of any compound in order to make both sides equal. Review of coefficients and subscripts. Quick, quick, quick. Coefficients is the big number in front. Remember we said that was a math word. Subscripts is the small number that goes to the bottom and the right. It tells you how many atoms you have of that compound. Remember to determine the final count of any element, you have to multiply the coefficient and the subscript. What happens if I were to put a 2 in front of the Na and then a 2 in front of the NaCl? So now it's balanced, okay? And so this is what the molecule of hydrogen would look like. We're going to have two atoms of hydrogen. The thing that you need to remember is that you can never change the subscripts. Subscripts have to remain the same because if you change it, you're changing what that molecule actually is. And so this would be H2, this would be O2, so we have two oxygen molecules attached together. Then finally we have H2O, and H2O is one oxygen and two hydrogens on either side. And so just looking at it, when these are graphically shown, you can see that I have two of these uh, red oxygen atoms on the left side and only one on the right. And so the first thing you might want to do is kind of double that. And so let me do that. Okay, so now visually we've got two water molecules. And so I've got two reds on the right side and two reds on the left side. You'll also notice, so that's balanced, that the hydrogens are changed. And so I have four hydrogens on the right side, but I only have two on the left side. So now let me click it again, and we've got a balanced equation. And so there is one oxygen. And we never write the coefficient of 1. But let's go over here to H2. You've got this H2, that H2, and so you have 2H2. So that would be on the left side. If we go on to the right side, you have this molecule of water, this molecule of water, and so we have two molecules of water on the right side. This is our example that we're going to be working. So we have S8, so this is sulfur, and oxygen, which yields compound sulfur and oxygen together. So let's get started. I would always start by making the T-chart. Now you don't have to, it's just something I like to do. It's a good way to sort of organize your thoughts here. So who do we have here on the left? We've got sulfur and oxygen we know we have to deal with and we have sulfur and oxygen on the right as well. So let's go ahead and give an initial count and see if this is balanced or not. So we have the subscript of eight, so we know we have eight sulfur over here, and we also know we have two oxygen on the left side or on your reactant side. Over here on the products, we know there's no subs subscript here, so this is gonna be a one. And we also know that oxygen has its own subscript, which is a 3. So looking at both sulfur and oxygen, we know that this is completely unbalanced and we need to deal with it. So what is my only option that I can do? The only option that I can do is I can put a different coefficient in front of any of these compounds that I want. So I'm going to start with sulfur. So if I have 8 sulfur over here on the reactant side, I need to get 8 over here. Well, what times 1 is going to give me 8? Well, that's 8, so let's stick it here. Now, once I do that, what is going to happen to our count? Well, our count is going to go from, now instead of just being 1, we have 8. So you can cross it out. Now we have 8. And But look, 8 also is going to affect our oxygen because these guys are married, right? There's no plus sign between them. So 8 times 3 is going to be 24. 
and that's okay. So I've got 8 and 8, and now I have 2 and 24. So what can we put in front of this oxygen over here to give it 24? Well, look, we've got to take into account we have the subscript of 2. So what times 2 is going to give us 24? Well, we're going to put a 12 right here because we only need to affect the oxygen. So 12 times 2 is going to be 24. Now, is this correct? Let's look. 8 and 8, 24 and 24. Now, is this 12 going to affect this sulfur? Absolutely not, because that plus sign is like a wall. The actual correct answer is right up here. Why must you balance chemical equations? Uh, list the steps needed to balance the reaction, and then I want you to go ahead and try the following uh, equation and see if you can balance it.